we can make equilibrium shift by changing the concentration, changing the temperature, and now if we even have one of the chemicals in our equation as a gas, in the state of gas, just even one, in this case we happen to have three, then we can use pressure to affect an equilibrium change as well. Now look, watch this. So we've got gas, gas, gas here, and here's our equilibrium expression again. Now, we take the container that this is in, and it's going to be, let's say it's collapsible. So we can go, huzzah! And we can actually cut the volume of the container in half. What is going to happen? Well, you're going to say, well, if I cut the container volume in half, Boyle's Law, I'm going to double the pressure. You sure are. And the pressures are going to change for everything here, and the pressure is going to double for everything but the reaction can actually shift to compensate for the doubling effect. What that means is this, if you take particles and scrunch them together, particles don't like that necessarily, and they go, ah, uh, I'm in less space now, there's more collisions. Let's, let's, let's shift to the side where there are less particles, and that way we'll each have more space. Ooh. So here's that, now that's just a kind of a, kind of silly way of saying it sort of thing, but there's something there that we can actually learn from. So, and it's this. If you actually take, and, and well, think about this, because I'm going to deal with this mathematically, but I hope that you get it. <laughs> okay. If you take that container volume and go, ha ha, right, and you cut all the volumes in half, yeah, all the pressures double, and all the concentrations have doubled too, right? So here's the thing. This concentration doubled, but it's squared. So you could say that the concentration double squared. And now, this doubles, and this doubles cubed. Oh my goodness, the doubling effect has more of an effect in the denominator here than it is, does as a numerator. So do you get what's going to happen? This is double squared, but this doubles in concentration, and this doubles cubed. And so the magnitude of this change is larger than this one, which means then our Q value is going to be a low number, a small number. And when Q is less than K, the reaction has to shift to the right. It has to make the numerator bigger so we can reestablish that k value. So what does that mean? What's the idea here? You're shifting to the side, in this case, where there are less moles of gas because that had the 2 here but this was a to total of 4 here as exponents. The deal is this. You shift to the side where there are less of you. And so, if you have a reaction where there's three moles of reactants and two moles of product, and I say, HASA! The volume is cut in half, which means the pressure doubles. When you increase the pressure on a reaction, here's the rule. When you increase the pressure, you shift to the side where there are less moles of gas. Less moles of gas. And so, less moles of gas here means that you're going to shift to the right to make more of that. So now, if I say to you, because you know this reaction is exothermic, if I say, what are all the ways possible that you know that you can increase the yield of ammonia as a product because it's a valuable chemical for us to have? Well, what you could do is you could add H2. That will shift the reaction to the right. You want to add N2 to shift the reaction to the right to make more of that. You could take away the NH3 and it would shift to the, re the reaction to the right. You could remove heat because as you cool it, the reaction would shift to the right. Hey, that's great. And then, do you have gases here? Yes, so you can utilize pressure, hopefully. Because if you can, you look at this and you go, well, wait a minute, okay, I got two moles here, I got four moles of gas here. If I increase pressure, that shifts to the side where there are less moles, which means to decrease the volume. Right. Now, here's the thing. Now, you got to humor me on this one. Now, stay with me. Let's just play let's pretend for a second. And I know this is driving you crazy when you look at it, but here's the deal. We have a 1 here and a 1 here and a 2 here. So let's have a chemical reaction where I'm not going to change the reaction, just look at it, where the moles of gas are equal on both sides. Well, then that would mean what? That really this would double. Oh, 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 first. We take that reaction and we go, huzzah! -huh! So we increase the concentrations by decreasing the volume. So this doubles, 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 but this is double squared, but this would be doubles times double is double squared. There would be no effect. When the moles are identical on each side and you increase or decrease pressure, there is no shift. Now, by the way, when I just said decrease pressure, because here's the thing. 
if you, now let's go back to the proper one. So you know now that if the moles are equal on both sides, there is no shift for pressure. But here's the thing. For this reaction right here, if I said to you, what would happen if you increased the volume on the container? Well, that means you're going to shift to the side where there are more moles of gas because you've got more space and, and the chemicals will then shift to the side where there are more moles to occupy that space. So increase the volume means decrease the pressure, shift to the side where there are more moles. So this reaction would shift to the left. Cool. Now, there is a situation uh, when, and, and this is asked sometimes, and I don't know why, but what the heck. I say, okay, you got this reaction occurring, and you add helium to this. And then, see, that it's supposed to actually confuse people because then, well, look what you've done. You've added helium gas, which isn't a part of the expression here and isn't part of the reaction, but you added it, so aren't you going to increase the total pressure in that container? Yes, you are. And what's that going to do to this equilibrium? Nothing. How come? Because you haven't changed the volume. And here's the deal. The individual partial pressures of all these, remember we can write this as a pressure equilibrium. The partial pressures of these haven't changed. When you add helium to this, it does change the overall pressure, but none of the pressures here which involve itself with that K expression, or that K constant. So guess what? If this gas isn't part of this reaction here that you're adding, then it's going to have no effect. Now, if it does have an effect by adding something and it reacts with the chemical and takes it out, the reaction will shift, but that's not the point. Usually you say an inert, an, an inert gas is added to the reaction. What happens? And you're just going to say, well, you know what? The total pressure increases, but that has no shift on the equilibrium because it ain't one of these chemicals. So there.